SoFi stock and all the gains are gone. Gag, literally, gains are gone. So I was supposed to release top four stocks video to buy in 2022 today. And the presentation that I had put together got old pretty quick. I mean, all the charts, all the info changed in just one day. I'm going to have to go back and change the chart, but all those stocks are even more exciting now than they were yesterday. So stay tuned for that video. Now let's talk about SoFi and what happened today in the market. Let's start with the market beat first. Jobs report came out today and showed that we gained 210,000 jobs as compared to Wall Street estimate of 573,000. That was a big miss and as soon as I heard the news, my immediate reaction was, this is not good as this was a big miss, but then I saw market turn green and I was confused and then I heard on the news that the market is seeing this as a sign that Fed might delay the taper and pump more money into the economy which didn't kind of make sense as one job report should not make Fed change its path, but hey, I'm not an economist. But then when I saw the details on the report where they were saying the retail and hospitality was a mess, I knew that was not a good sign and it's not going to be pretty. And I think it took few minutes for market to realize and then we saw this massive reaction where everything started to crash. So before we move on, as a gentle reminder, please click on the like button and consider subscribing. And if you like talking about this stuff and more, then consider joining our Patreon and Discord where we talk about trades, news, and much more. Okay, so let me start with the news and then I will show you few updates on SoFi and how much I bought today. And if you can comment below and tell me what all you traded today, that'll be super helpful to all of us who are interested in SoFi and also in stock market. So comment any trades you made, maybe on Tesla, Affirm, Nvidia, anything. Okay, so here's the news that rattled the market. So as you can see, job growth disappoints in November with a gain of just 210,000, while they were all estimating of about 573,000 was their estimation. On top of that, professional and business services and transportation and warehousing led gains. We already know supply chain is a big, big issue right now. But while hiring in leisure and hospitality was sluggish and retail lost jobs despite the traditional holiday hiring season. This is not pretty because this is basically telling us that the jobs that are usually high in demand at this year was not high in demand this year. This could be because of more and more COVID fear that people are feeling and they don't want to go out and work. So as you know, businesses are canceling their holiday parties. Mass mandates are coming back and some European countries are going into lockdown. So it looks like COVID fear is building. And if you remember any day in the past when market had dropped because of fear, it has handsomely rewarded those who held strong. So let's talk about market details. But before that, pay attention to this. This is a COVID surge graph in South Africa. And as you can see, just in last two or three days, we have seen a huge spike in COVID cases in South Africa, as you can see with the Omicron. So this is really, really concerning because it looks like it's going to spread a lot more. Now I'm gonna come back to technicals for one second. Okay, so there is something called DSPAC. It's an index that measures 25 of the biggest companies acquired by blank check firms. And in the last five days, it has underperformed S&P 500 index. Take a look at these names. Ginkgo Bioworks, 28.11% decline today. Clover Health, 20.70. My goodness, Clover is at $4.29. This is insane. Porch Group, 17.71 or 18% decline. SoFi, 17% decline. Skills, 17% decline. This is massive sell-off all across SPAC, all across S&P, all across Dow Jones. You name the company that dropped today. But I had two companies in my portfolio that actually maintained today. AT&T was going up. That was so surprising to see that. But of course, people are flying to more of a stable stock. And then along with that, I have NXPI, one of the stock in my portfolio. That was up by almost $2. I was like really surprised to see. But that's a semiconductor, which is high in demand. And of course, but NVIDIA was crashing. So it looks like all the companies that have gained so much in the last few months were giving out some gains today. So the steps that we will take on red days like today or maybe red days like next week, who knows when this will end, will define how our portfolio will turn out next year. So let me show you some more details on SoFi. So next on your screen is an S&P 500 fund. And you can see today, December 3rd, major money came back into the market. Look, this is last week right here. I'm gonna enlarge it. This is last week when the COVID fear was building, or last few days, sorry, when the COVID fear was building and everybody sold out. 
And now everybody, all the big institution, this was yesterday and this is today. So the fund or the money is coming back into the S&P 500. It was really high towards the beginning of November when everything was like super high. Then during the month of December and initially when the COVID fear was building up, it got sold out. And this is the last two days. This is December 3rd right here. And you can see all the money is basically coming back. Yours and mine, $10 or $50 is nothing. As these guy comes in and takes in 100,000 calls and by looking at the reds, retailers are selling off and institutions are taking advantage of that. Always happens. So now take a look quickly over here is the S&P 500 chart. So anytime we have this major red days, you can actually correlate with the money coming into the market. Anytime we have major red days, you can correlate. Anytime we have major red days, you can correlate. Right here, see that period when the, when the market was not sure and it kind of lasted, S&P was going down for a while and this is all the purchases that was happening and now this is now when S&P is right down here and you can see market or money is coming back into the market. So how about we start to think like them and put on our headphones. I'm serious. Try this next time. When market is going crazy and when everything is looking red, put your noise cancelling headphones on and then trade. That won't do anything, trust me it doesn't, but you will remember this video and say that I'm cancelling all the noise and just focusing on the long-term gain. The greener grass on the other side, if you can say. Now let me share with you what I bought today for SoFi. And yes, I'm out of the money to buy officially. And for the first time, I have dipped into margin. I never use margin for buying stocks. I use it for options collateral because they don't really take the money out and I can get out of options when I want. But mainly I use them for Tesla options, which actually I played today and Tesla paid me to buy 10 more shares of Tesla today. It works beautifully. And if you want to be a part of these trades, then join our Discord, link is in the description. Okay, so let me share what I have and what I bought today. So this is a list of all the options and everything that I have. This is not the share, but only the options. But today I bought 1000 shares of SoFi at $15 a share. It actually got executed towards the close. Right here, as you can see, I bought 15 shares at, or sorry, 1000 shares at $15 a share. Then these are all the options that I have. This, I had five calls from before, July 22nd, $15 calls. I added five more calls today. And right here, my average came down. I'm still losing about 22% on this. And rest of them, as you can see, I'm losing big time except this one position that I opened months ago, which is basically I sold $115 puts and price is still up $15. That's why you see this a little bit red, which is 9% gain. Everything else that you see over here is losing money big time. And I don't expect these options to turn green. I would love to add more to these options so that I can bring my average down, but I'm out of money and I'm not willing to dip into more margin. So that's why I'm gonna call it a day here in terms of buying any more SoFi because as long as the price doesn't drop to like $10, I, then I would think about joining or buying more, but it's not gonna happen. I feel that we have hit the bottom or maybe hitting the bottom almost, 14 level is the bottom. And, and, can, and I'll show you a chart in a second why I'm saying this. But I feel this is such a good opportunity right now to buy any of these calls or puts. So if you're not into it, again, my opinion, entertainment purposes only. But if I was not into it, I would be jumping up and down to get these if I had some money available. But of course, as I said, I'm dipping into margin. I don't wanna dip into more margin. Now let's take a look at the SoFi chart quickly. And this is the chart that I always use, of course, with the updated pricing. This is a Fibonacci level that I have drawn. And as you can see, Fibonacci level where we are right now is pretty exciting in a way. So this is the level we are in right now. And you can see Fibonacci has always respected this price point. One, two, three, four. It has Try to touch it, try to touch it many times, but it has never gone under it big time. It has never touched the 1040 level. Thank God for that. It kind of came up right after that as soon as we, we had the SPAC merger, then after that it came back up and it has never gone down below the 23.6% level of Fibonacci uh, retracement. So now I don't expect it to go any further down. I feel this is a very, very respectable uh, range right here around 1450 or 1470 is a very respectable range. And it's going to push back up from here as we have seen many times it has done that. This was the time when it went below I think to 13 something and then it came back up over here. So this is looking I feel this is looking like a bottom for SoFi. Again, I could be completely wrong. Next week could bring a havoc and we will have like a big sell off again and it break the support and land in like 13, who knows. But this is what I see right now looking at it that it's going to jump off of that Fibonacci level that I just mentioned over here. 
So with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tesla, Apple, Google, Amazon, I mean the pillars of any asset markets are crashing. Do we think that this is going to continue? And if yes, then how long? I feel we are in such a state where this fear can continue for a few days until we get more clarity on Omicron and some direction on where the countries are headed. We could see more pain and sad part is, like most of us, we bought so many dips that we feel it's all a scam. So this is what I plan on doing. If I see a Tesla, Nvidia, Apple go on more sale, then I will try and sell some of my less conviction stocks, even if I'm taking a little loss on them, and use that money to buy some of these names because when market comes back up, we will gain from these much faster than any other sleeper stock. And I feel, and this is my opinion only, truly, that most of the momentum stocks are done for a while. We are not going to see the same momentum we had in the beginning of 2021. Again, my opinion only, and it's not a financial advice. So I hope I provided some value, and if you got anything out from this video, then give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Subscribing. And if you want to talk stocks, options, trade ideas, then come over to our Patreon and Discord. Links are in the description below. And also comment below to tell me what plays you did on SoFi today. As always, an absolute pleasure to share all of this with you. Until next time, you all have a sparkling day.